to the show. A talk with Summit League Commissioner Tom Dupel coming up a little later. And some words with Mike Carter, the athletic director at Oral Roberts University, as the Golden Eagles rejoin the Summit League this year. Well, the championship season almost in the books. Still some kids competing in the outdoor track and field championships. Otherwise, 19 Summit League championships are in the books. Denver and North Dakota State combined to win 15 of those 19 this year. Here's a look back at the 13-14 season. Start back in early November in Fort Wayne. South Dakota State earns the first championship of the season. The Jackrabbit men do it in cross country. It's their fourth team championship in the last five years. Trent Lusignan covers the 8,000 meters in 24:49 to take the individual title. Brecca Walland of North Dakota State outruns the field by more than 10 seconds to take the women's individual championship as North Dakota State takes the team title in cross country for the third year in a row. Later in November, Denver kicks off an impressive first year run of championship for the new kids on the league block. Kristen Hamilton scores twice, Francesca Garzaloni adds two more goals, and the Pioneers beat North Dakota State 5-1 in the women's soccer final. Hamilton sets a new league record with nine points in the tournament. One week later, Denver wins its first men's team title of the season. Reed Hukari tallies the only goal as Denver tops Western Illinois in the men's soccer championship. And to close out the fall season, IUPUI plays the host, and they've got the most in the league volleyball tournament this year. The Jags beat Denver 25-19, 25-19, and 25-19. It's the first league tournament title in volleyball for IUPUI. Alexis Meeks is named the tournament most valuable player with 36 assists and 11 digs in the final match. In the new year, the new team in the league is back at it again. Denver wins both the men's and the women's titles at the Swimming and Diving Championships in Indianapolis. Denver athletes win 33 of the 40 events over the four-day meet, and the Pioneers set 14 new Summit League records. A little later in February, the Coyotes capture their first men's team championship of the season. In fact, South Dakota earns its second straight indoor title in track and field. Jeff Mettler is named the track MVP. He wins the 3,000 meters on day one and comes back for a victory in the mile on day two. On the women's side, it's the second championship of the season for North Dakota State. Antoinette Goodman sets a league record in the 60 meters. Ashley Tinglestead sets a league record in the 400. Maddie McClellan wins the mile and the 5,000 meters as the Bison win their league record seventh straight indoor championship. And more to come from basketball through baseball. Right back to finish up the Summit League Championship Rewind. This is an epic sports commercial. There's no Hollywood director. There's no million dollar budget. There's no slow motion. Or stadiums filled with crowds. It's just us. Us. Real us. Real athletes who want to get better, get stronger, and make the starting lineup. Be healthy and active. And this is where we'll do it. This Sanford Sports Complex, a game-changing destination. Learn more at SanfordSports.com. Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort. A casino in a grand new way, where you can turn an evening out into a winning night out. Spin a day off into a day of play. Who says life next door shouldn't be grand? Start your engines for our summer car giveaway now through July 27th. Earn entries for your chance to win. Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort, a grand new way to eat, play, and stay. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. 
Welcome back to our look back at the 13-14 championship season. And we pick it up with a school first for the Coyotes in basketball and finish it up with another victory for the Bison, this one in baseball. In March, it's the Summit at the Falls. In the women's semifinals, the University of South Dakota knocks off five-time defending tournament champion South Dakota State. And the Coyotes go on to beat Denver 82-71 in the championship game behind 16 points from Polly Harrington. It is the first tournament title in basketball for USD. It's the second tournament title for North Dakota State's men. The 2009 champs do it again. The Bison beat Denver in the semis and then hold off Fort Wayne 60-57 in the title game. Taylor Braun's bucket and one with 12 seconds left seals the deal. Fort Wayne ends up with a school record 24 wins on the season, but the Bison earn the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. When April rolls around, Denver dominates again, this time on the golf course. The Pioneer women win the team title by a record 71 shots. Denver women finish in the top three individual spots, led by Tunji Daffenrud, who fires a three over par total in the three-day tournament. The Denver men win a close team competition. They finish five shots ahead of IUPUI. IUPUI's Rob Vandeven earns medalist honors, shooting 72, 70, and 77 to finish three over for the tournament. Denver then comes back a week later to take the team tennis titles. The Pioneer men beat Fort Wayne in the championship showdown. Denver wins three of the four final singles matches, but Daniel Kang of Fort Wayne wins the number one singles title beating Henry Craig of Denver 6-4, 6-3, and 6-4. The Denver women went 8-0 against the league in the regular season, and they capped that off with a win over Fort Wayne in the tournament championship. Denver senior Caroline Schnell wins a doubles and a singles match on the final day. Now the rest of the spring season belongs to the Bison, starting with a softball championship. After a loss to IUPUI in the opening round, North Dakota State reels off five straight wins. NDSU beats Fort Wayne 12-5 in the final game. Danny Pugh cranks out a grand slam for Fort Wayne, and she sets a new league record with 60 runs batted in this season. But Logan Moreland, Janina Ortega, Amanda Grable, and Jackie Stifter all hit home runs for the Bison, and Krista Menke strikes out 10 to get the win for NDSU. In mid-May, it's the Outdoor Track and Field Championships in Fargo. And for the first time in the 31-year history of the league, two teams tie for the team title. It comes down to the final men's event. North Dakota State wins the 4x4 relay, South Dakota finishes second, and both teams finish with 260 team points. It's the fifth straight outdoor team championship for the Bison, and it is the first Summit League team title in any sport for the Coyote men. Meanwhile, the North Dakota State women cruise to their seventh straight outdoor championship, matching that string of indoor titles. Antoinette Goodman and the Bison win eight of the ten running events, and they set new league records in the 200, the 400, and the 4x100 relay. And in the spring season finale, the Bison cap off an incredible sports season with their first Summit League Baseball Tournament Championship. NDSU rides three great pitching starts to three straight wins. Reed Funenstein shuts out Western Illinois for eight-plus innings in the final game. John Skurbeck hits a first-inning grand slam. It's the only home run of the tournament, and the Bison beat the Leathernecks 9 to nothing. Well, all of this championship stuff makes the commissioner very happy. Thoughts on the addition of Denver, the perseverance of Omaha, and the return of Oral Roberts in our interview with Tom Duple next. Since 1982, the Summit League has been achieving excellence beyond providing a quality education to more than 120,000 students. The league continues to strengthen its reputation of being nationally competitive in athletics. Today, more than 3,000 elite student athletes at eight institutions embody the vision, purpose, and innovation the Summit League represents. These young men and women are reaching for the summit in both athletic and academic endeavors.
minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort. A casino in a grand new way, where you can turn an evening out into a winning night out, spin a day off into a day of play. Who says life next door shouldn't be grand? Grand Falls welcomes the Kenny Wayne Shepherd Band, Saturday, June 28th at 8 p.m. Call, click, or visit for tickets. At Shields, we know gear, fashion, and sports are an essential part of your lifestyle. Because whether you're on the river or the town, we're all looking to be the best we can be. Whether it's a bike ride through the falls, a weekend at the lake, or your next tea time, our newly renovated store in Sioux Falls is ready to outfit you with more gear, more looks, and more fashion. Shields, in Sioux Falls since 1977. Our expansion is now complete at the corner of 41st Street and Western Avenue. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. Summit League Commissioner Tom Duple pays attention. He's an RPI nut. He's always uh, looking at how the league stands and stacks up against other conferences around the country. And we sat him down to talk about the state of the summit. It's been a great year for us. Uh, you know, we started in the fall, and uh, Denver was ranked 14th in the nation in women's soccer. We took that into the basketball season, and we had just a phenomenal season. Obviously, we got our first win in the NCAA tournament in the men's with uh, NDSU winning and, and uh, beating Oklahoma. Uh, but the SDSU women uh, got it all the way to the Final Four in the WNIT. Uh, and so we had another uh, number of teams in postseason that uh, got victories in the CIT and the CBI. We come into the spring and we had our highest ranking that we've ever had with softball ranked 14th in the country, uh, including all the 31 Division I uh, conferences, so we're really pleased with that. We had a bunch of individual, you know, golfers and uh, track athletes uh, that are still competing. From Fort Wayne to Fargo and everywhere in between, this little league that was falsely rumored to be on the downslide a few years ago is certainly now on solid ground, especially after reaching into the Rockies to find an institution that had a banner year in its first season in the summit. We anticipated Denver being a great fit, and boy, they certainly have. Uh, we knew it was going to be a good program that uh, was coming in. Uh, you know, they won men's and women's soccer. They won men's and women's swimming, men's and women's golf, uh, men's and women's tennis. Uh, so they've really enjoyed our league. Um, you know, they've set the, the bar and the standard in a lot of those sports. And uh, now our teams are you know, in a position to be able to understand this is what it's going to take to compete and beat Denver now. While the Pioneers have proved themselves to be a league leader, so has the other most recent addition in Omaha. The Mavericks are in their third year of the four-year grind of making the move from Division Two to Division One. They have one more year before their programs will be eligible to compete in Summit League tournaments. You know, making that transition from Division Two to Division One, it's the longest four years you can make right now. And, uh, you know, having them in the league schedule and, you know, they're playing, they're getting a Player of the Week awards or Player of the Month awards, you know, if they earn them. And uh, they are so anxious to, you know, be a part of our postseason tournaments. Um, but uh, they have done a great job uh, with their program. Uh, their academic uh, center is brand new, and it's it's great. And building their new facilities, uh, everything's on on the upswing down there. And down in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Oral Roberts officially returns this summer to get the league back to nine members. And while ten might be ideal, Duple remains committed to the philosophy of addition only for the right reasons. We just had one of the best years we've ever had, you know, all around with the good solid eight programs. Uh, we're going to add to that, which we feel is another great fit with Oral Roberts coming back. Uh, they're a good program. They were a good program in our league uh, a number of years ago, and, and they're going to continue to be a good program. So we'll have nine solid programs. You know, obviously we, we would like to try to get ten because it's best for, you know, scheduling purposes, but we've got to find that right fit. Uh, there's a lot of them out there that, that uh, we think we could get, uh, but we're not sure if they're the right fit. Uh, Denver has been, Oral Roberts coming back in, you know, we're really proud of 
you know, the progress that Omaha has made. Uh, is there that magic one out there to get us to 10, 11, or 12? Uh, you know, we're, we're constantly looking, um, but there's no panic. Our presidents and chancellors have made a solid commitment to our league. Um, there's no one leaving, no one's talking about leaving, and what the talk is is the success that we've had and how proud that everybody is about our league right now. Will changes at the highest level affect what happens in the Summit League if the power conferences start to pay for play? Do we have to? We'll talk about that when we continue with the commissioner. of excellence where big efforts yield big results the places where perfection is perfected but without the players without the performance these are only places the stage is set now exceed yesterday choose Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort. A casino in a grand new way, where you can turn an evening out into a winning night out, spin a day off into a day of play. Who says life next door shouldn't be grand? We're celebrating three years with fireworks, cake, and a poolside party on Saturday, June 7th. Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort, a grand new way to eat, play, and stay. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Back to our State of the Summit with Commissioner Tom Dupel. We get into new buildings around the league, revenue distribution, and a concept called cost of attendance and how it might affect the Summit League. There is a building boom right now on several Summit League campuses. With new or remodeled basketball buildings, either done or under construction, or soon to be in Fargo, Indianapolis, Omaha, and Vermilion. We may lead the nation in new facilities uh, coming up there for basketball, but that shows the commitment that our institutions have in those particular sports of men's and women's basketball. Obviously, we'll have uh, volleyball in a number of those as well. Um, you know, when you're recruiting, uh, first thing a lot of recruits look at is, you know, where they're going to play, uh, what's your attendance, and so forth. And so uh, this really helps in recruiting. In addition to all of the new digs in those summit cities, the league basketball tournaments will move in March to the new Sanford Premier Center in Sioux Falls. The new event center really is going to take our, you know, basketball tournament to a whole new level. And, and it goes along with the success that we've had in basketball. I think we've grown, the tournament's grown, and we're ready to make that next step. Uh, taking a tour of it uh, today, it's just fantastic. All the fan amenities that uh, we're going to be able to offer our, our, you know, member institutions, and it's great. Uh, we really feel privileged to be, you know, in a new tournament uh, arena. Uh, for next year and uh, all the support that we've gotten from Sioux Falls has been, you know, uh, takes us to another level. When we got that uh, article in the USA Today uh, where, you know, the headlines were Summit League's March's Best Kept Secret, um, that really opened up a lot of eyes. Well, so did the performance put on by the North Dakota State men in the NCAA tournament, which not only garnered notoriety for the Bison program, but generated a financial payback for the entire league. And that is something Dupel says that the league tournament has been able to do as well. We've been very fortunate um, getting great revenue from the basketball tournament. Um, you know, every ticket that's sold and uh, concessions monies that we do make and um, any uh, sponsorship money after expenses all gets distributed back to our members. 
And uh, there's not many mid-majors that, that are being able to distribute money back uh, based on their basketball tournament. And uh, so that's, that's a positive for us. And, you know, when we talked to potential new members and uh, so forth, that was uh, uh, an area we really were able to sell. Money, obviously, will continue to be a major topic of discussion as the league moves forward. The question of who gets what and how much and why might get a little more complicated in the near future as the NCAA looks at proposed changes in the way it deals with student-athletes at the highest levels. They'll talk about autonomy, where the Power Five conferences in college football could pay players and provide medical insurance, for instance. And then there is a term called cost of attendance, the gap between what a scholarship pays for and the actual overall cost of going to school. Duple says there's no way to know yet how those decisions will affect the Summit League, but he and the President's Council are preparing to face those issues and a few others in the next round of league meetings. You know, one of the big things that, that uh, we wanted to know is we wanted to keep our AQs. That's important for us, to get that automatic qualification into the NCAA championship. In this new model, we feel that that's going to be uh, taken care of. The other one, obviously, is our revenue distribution. Will we have the same revenue distribution that we have now? And that seems to be addressed as well. So those were the two major concerns that we had. Now it's just getting into the weeds and the nuts and bolts on on what autonomy really means and how it's going to play out in recruiting, um, you know, the cost of attendance and uh, would some of our institutions be willing to, to go to the cost of attendance or should we as a league, you know, make a, make a policy on issues like that. So we'll spend a lot of time on the new NCAA governance uh, uh, that's our number one topic going into our meetings. Well, those meetings will once again include representatives from Oral Roberts University. We'll talk about their return to the league next. Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort. A casino in a grand new way, where you can turn an evening out into a winning night out spin a day off into a day of play. Who says life next door shouldn't be grand? Help support the Sioux Falls JC's 4th of July party. Win-win with a bang. Donate $10, get $10 to play. Now through July 3rd. Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort. A grand new way to eat, play, and stay. sports commercial there's no hollywood director there's no million dollar budget there's no slow motion or stadiums filled with crowds it's just us us real athletes real athletes who want to get better get stronger and make the starting lineup be healthy and active and this is where we'll do it the sanford sports complex a game-changing destination learn more at sanfordsports.com Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Oral Roberts University left the Summit League two years ago to join the Southland Conference, and it was a move that at the time made a lot of financial and geographical sense. But Mike Carter, the athletic director at ORU, says the game changed before his school could even settle in. We thought that... Uh from an economic standpoint, uh, that the travel uh, was going to be better. Uh, at the time, it was a very concise footprint of 10 schools, and uh, everything looked great. Uh, but before we could uh, vote or play a game in the league, um, the league voted to expand for football reasons, and vastly expanded the footprint and changed the dynamics completely. So after two seasons in the Southland, Oral Roberts rejoins now what Carter agrees is a new and improved Summit League. I think it's improved. Uh, I think Tom Duple has just done a fantastic job. 
I think uh, we're starting to see uh, strength come from Denver. I think that was a great addition. I think uh, we're seeing uh, University of Nebraska Omaha get stronger, quicker than most transitional programs, and I think that's good. Uh, I think there's a a real sense of uh, of strength and quality in the Summit League, and I think that's something that's exciting for us. Our thanks to Mike Carter at Oral Roberts. Thanks to the commissioner, Tom Duple. We'll see you next August with another Inside the Summit League. We take you out this year with this video montage. There's a Nothing's gonna stop us